Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Tracy Banter and today's video is going to be about welding uphill with 7018, an open root weld. It's very seldom ever used unless it's needed to be where you have a base metal, a main body of frame, and you're going to put an attachment to that and some standards require that. Also, before you start, you do need a DC arc welding machine, whether it's a generator or whether it is electrically powered by a source. And it needs to be a constant current DC welding machine. That gives you more control. You gotta watch your heat. While I welded this, I did put water, poured it on here, and buffed it and cleaned it you got to clean all your passes as soon as you stop when you're welding you start above the weld you come down to the bottom of the area that you ground down and you're going to work your way up and you're going to start welding into that area and you're not you're going to have to watch your heat you don't want to get it too hot you don't want a big giant keyhole you want to see that you are penetrating that area. You're going to need some steel wedges. There's another place you can buy these as well. If anybody wants to know of some of these items and you can't find it, you can email me at bantersarcforcegmail.com and I'll let you know where you can buy some of these tools. These wedges, they've got bronze ones, they've got metal ones, they've got different sizes of them, lengths. They've got plastic ones. You're going to want a knife edge for the 7018. And like I said earlier, you're going to grind it back quite a bit. you got to have some wiggle room to be able to control that puddle. Uh, you wouldn't think it would be that way, but it is. And it's like, kind of like TIG welding, but you're keeping the slag out of the way and pushing the rod in as it melts and wiggling it back and forth to the side where you're wanting to penetrate and coming back into the keyhole to fill it up. And then you're pushing again as you walk back into the heavier metal than the beveled area. So. Most gaps are 8th inch, 532 and 316 on material that uh, it up to, let's just say up to about half inch. And if it's thicker than that, um, you're probably going to have a little bit more gap. What happens when you're welding on this material, because the water going through it, it's cold. And what happens is it shrinks fast. If you went with an eighth inch gap, it probably will close up on you before you finish that entire root pass in that material. And um, I usually go with a 532. And so I use a 532 gap and you're gonna need wedges. So you tack it up and when we get it tacked up, you're gonna put about an inch tack on this side and you're going to put an inch tack on this side all the way around and it's good and then we're going to take this out it's going to shrink pretty good you may have to cut it to get it out but then while we're welding i'm going to take this wedge and get up here about six inches and i'm going to stick it in there and that helps keep it from shrinking down into that material and as you get up here a little bit closer I'll pull it out and I'll, I'll put it up in here a little bit more now when I'm welding on pipe, I'll do the same thing. I'll stick it in different locations as I'm welding and it helps keep it from shrinking down onto the, the base of the, of the main uh, material of the pipe that you're working on. So fire up the machine and we'll tack this together. Another thing I want to add is you may want to leave your machine on high idle you get better starts and uh, when you do your starts you want to start in front of the weld where the gap is 
and then come back into the, the start of your puddle where you're burning out all that uh, strike when you're uh, lighting up the rod warming up the rod at the same time uh, I said if it if the material if you're ever asked if the material is below some places are different 50 degrees or 40 degrees you're going to warm it up to a couple hundred degrees or more not much more 250 300 most is all it needs um, I'm using Hobart Welding Rod 332 7018 uh, you can buy this at almost any agricultural center um, I do like the MR moisture resistant now it's called Excalibur uh, 7018 Lincoln but uh, it's not always available on the weekends if something breaks down you need rod usually you know by 8 o'clock in the morning to 7 o'clock at night or however long they're open you can get this rod seven days a week so I got a 532 rod in here for a gap I want to hold it as square as I can check it out make sure that it is in plane the same way got it in the middle and our remote control is on 80 amps
everything everything's set up you're going to want to have if you're looking at this welding rod at a 90 degree angle you want to have 5 to 15 degrees of angle going up and when you're coming into this this is called your base of your material and this is your adjacent piece and the reason that is beveled so much is so you can angle that rod to the side as much as you can because you're going to burn here real quick that keyhole and you're going to want to stay on that metal of the base more as you're pushing that rod in and then you're going to just move to the right a little bit into this beveled area and you're just going to fill it you don't want to have a lot of amperage if you're you're going to have to be comfortable how you're standing where you're at so that you can maneuver that rod back and forth and keep that arc going and you push it in there and you'll see a little keyhole on one side it's similar to uphill 60 10 but you're going to stay well even 60 10 you're going to stay a little bit low and add the metal to it but you got to watch that keyhole and push similar to 60 10 and what's going to happen on the back side is the slag is going to or the the flux is going to go with it and it's going to look like you didn't do a good job but you're going to have a bead on the back side that's going to be a quarter of an inch three sixteenths of an inch no less than an eighth it really needs to, or 532 it needs to be 532 to 3 sixteenths to i think quarters it not much more than that and it'll be a nice little fillet bead on the back side so that's where you're going to have your angles over here you'll, you'll move this back and forth and around you'll stay here a lot and then when it gets too much too much of a keyhole that you're going to want to go back into the base metal and you just keep working it back and forth as you're going up that 5 to 15 degrees you might go a little bit more of a downward angle but not much more because you want to penetrate it and and walk it as you go and add the metal in the further you go like this you're heating the metal up pretty quick up here and you don't want to preheat that metal as, as quick as possible and like i said when i'm taking my test on pipe I'll stick that wedge in there like that and somewhere before the rod and that keeps that metal from coming down in there so we'll stick that in there a little bit that wedge and help hold that in place after you get done welding you want to go back there with a the grinder I know you should be able you you think you should be able to just use a chip and hammer but you got to get in there and grind out that weld there's spots like that right there there's slag in there i gotta keep grinding that you may burn all that out but you may not you want to get that down there where there's not much in there and then you put another pass in there and you're just gonna fill it up just enough to where you've burned into that edge you don't want they don't want you to use over a 332 uh, on main structural steel just just in a hurry you can do it you can use some eighth inch in there you don't want to burn a hole in here though but you know you weld on that until it's with eighth inch you could weld that out till it's flush and then you could go back again and you could weld another one till you got a eighth of an inch of uh, past the bevel and then you got a 100% bead in there. Or you can use 332 and uh, put a pass in there. Possibly another pass. And then you put a two-pass cap. You always want to do a two-pass cap. Backside. This is the backside. This is the root. And you look along in here and there's no undercut at all all the way down there's quite a bit of metal on this side um the this material got very hot i kept oil, uh, oil i kept putting water on it down on the inside to cool it down um 
But you look all the way down through there, there's no undercut on the edges. That is a good bead. It'd be nice if it was a little tighter. But I got the camera in the way, and I can't get in there real tight myself and get really, really comfortable. I was back here a ways. My eyes are not as good as they used to be. I have to get in really close. But it is a good continuous bead all the way down. There's no voids in it. And um, I said I didn't travel very far because uh, I was in there real close to see what's going on, but it penetrated real good. I wanted you to be able to see how the uh, root bead goes in from the other side. In these clips of every time I strike an arc and make this weld, I did speed the film up just a little bit. I want to slow the film down, the video, a little bit at the last two, maybe three of the rods that I welded with and you'll see it moving a little bit slower but you can also see while I'm welding I'm staying on the base metal more than I am on the attachment side and I have been turning the metal or turning the welding down quite a bit I, I believe I was at 75 and I had a little bitty bottle of water with a hole in the cap. And I would squirt it down onto the inside of that tubing to cool it down. After each time that I had cleaned the slag away and ground that stop so that I could restrike and start again. Now, when you stop welding, you do not pull out higher than the pedal you want to take your rod and work it down towards the lower area of the puddle before you pull out that way you don't cause any gas pockets or you don't cause a deeper keyhole in this picture you see real quick this is what it looks like when you're not welding there's not much of a keyhole there, but that's all it needs. And there I restrike again, and it's real tight. You're not moving very far. You remember that gap was only 5 30 seconds of an inch, and it's probably closed down to an eighth by now. And you're just moving back and forth and pushing that rod slightly at the leading edge. You're not digging up like you would with 6010. You might with 6010 you come up into it and burn a keyhole this one you just stay at the lower edge and you'll watch where it does burn a keyhole but you don't want to cause it bigger and that's when you go back to the main frame of the vessel or your main frame body that you're welding the attachment to and this is where i'm tying in on the tack at the very top.